Don't play summer ball. Yes, I said it, but before you get triggered, let me tell you why. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got a super awesome episode today. Um, just want to talk about a couple things before we get into it. Um, so again, as I say with most videos, again, we're trying to grow the YouTube page. We're trying to see um, how much good content we can put on for athletes, parents, coaches, um, just needing help and guidance in, in the baseball world. Um, so please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, we got some exciting stuff planned for the summer, um, some other guests coming on before that. Um, but yeah, so again, like and subscribe on the channel. If you're not following on Instagram, on Twitter, um, it's at DUS underscore hitting. That's DUS with two S's underscore hitting. Um, post daily content on there as well. Um, so again, sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Zeal Talk. This is episode 16, and I'm just hopping on just to talk about something that I'm very passionate about and I want to talk to a little bit as the spring season starts to come to an end, getting ready for summer. I have a lot of people ask me whether it's DMs in person, you know, what do I do for summer? What are your thoughts? Um, and I want to talk about a topic that I'm very passionate about. You know, it's my opinion. I'm opinionated about it. Maybe I'm biased. I don't know. Um, but I want to at least share my thoughts on the topic of summer ball, what do we do, and uh, and get into it. So about two years ago, I wrote a blog, um, and it was called Don't Play Summer Ball. Um, it started some great conversations. We got good feedback, bad feedback, um, and that was kind of the goal of me writing it. Um, but now that we're two years later, I feel like I feel even more passionate about it. So I want to just talk about it again um, and kind of give some thoughts, some different scenarios, what's good, what's bad, and uh, let the people decide, let the audience decide what they think, what they want to do. Um, so I'm going to talk about good situations to play summer ball, bad situations. Um, but first I want to talk about my experience with everything I do, whether it's teaching, hitting, talking about podcasts, talking about baseball thoughts. I like explaining my opinion so people can kind of understand where I'm coming from when I talk about this, um, in terms of my career. Um, so I went to a small school, small division three school. Um, most people have never heard of it. Um, and I love my time there, played baseball there, um, had the chance to win a spot as a freshman, um, was a four, five-year starter, I guess, because of COVID. Um, and I want to talk to you about kind of the steps I made in my baseball journey, the decisions I made with summer ball, and then kind of what I would do if I could go back and change things. Um, so my first year, I had a great season. I actually went and played summer ball in Virginia Beach. It was a great summer league. Um it was a good place to develop as we played, but when it's hot down there, as the season gets on, you get tired, you don't want to do stuff. So it was still a good experience for me. I was younger, got at bats, um, and uh, went back, had another good sophomore year. Going into that summer, I decided to play in a pretty solid baseball league, competitive league, um, great talent, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, JUCO guys. Um, and that was a decision for me I thought was best. I wanted a chance to really kind of showcase my ability. Playing at a small school, you don't get um, a lot of exposure um, to coaches, to scouts. If you want to play at the next level, that was certainly one of my goals. Obviously, it's, it's a long shot playing Division three ball, but that was one of my goals. Um, so I was able to play summer ball um, in the NYCBL, a good summer league, not the best, but a great summer league. Um, and I was able to have a really, really good summer season. Um, I had... I think I led the league in on base percentage, tons of walks, tons of hits. Um, ended up making the All-Star game. Had a great showing at the All-Star game, playing in front of 30-some scouts. Um, had a chance to, you know, run a 60, do some I.O. in front of scouts. It's my first time I really had real exposure. So for me in that situation, I thought that was a great situation for me to play summer ball. You know, small school, wanted to get exposure, wanted to play against really good competition, wood bat. And it really paid off for me. Again, I was able to have a great summer, get some exposure, get my names in front of scouts, whatever it was. Um, that was a good choice. Going into my third year, now that that was kind of like, okay, I've gotten some exposure, um, I fell into the trap that a lot of baseball players do, especially at the college level where it's just summer ball. You know, during summer we play summer ball and we're going to go play 40 games and that's just what you do. Um, and for me, I feel like I made the wrong choice in terms of going back to play summer ball. I went back, played for the same league and, um, didn't do as well, had good numbers, but didn't do as well, really got burnt out from baseball, wasn't able to train as much. And for me, after having that first really good summer, 
it was clear that there was areas in my game that I needed to improve on if I was going to go attempt to try to play at the next level, whether it was indie ball, get drafted, undrafted free agent, whatever it was. Um, and for me personally, I was still undersized. You know, I definitely could have gotten a lot stronger in the weight room. I was very fast, but I definitely could have got faster um, in arm strength. So for me, my biggest things was like physicality. Like I needed to gain some muscle, get stronger, get more explosive, get powerful, add a little bit more to that power tool. Um, and for me also was arm strength. That was something that I struggled with. I had some shoulder issues in college and never really built my arm strength back up to where it was in high school. So for me, going to play more games really ended up being a waste of time. Yeah, I had a great experience, great friends, great coaches, but it became a waste of time because I was spending the whole summer, two to three months, just going through the motions, playing games, trying to make sure I feel good. Kind of had some up and downs with confidence, was pushing too hard because I was trying to have the same summer I had the year before. And it ended up hurting me because that's three months I missed out on really could have gained some muscle mass, gotten quicker, faster, more explosive, and really could have got my arm healthy, first of all, and then really tried to increase arm strength, whether it's throwing programs or just overall health. Um, so that's something I look back on and really wish that I didn't go through the motions. And the thing is, is as I'm saying, don't play summer ball, you're going to see how this largely applies to mostly college athletes. I'm going to get into the high school side of things. High school is different. Obviously, like some guys don't even go to play in college. So like play as many games as you want, have fun, get better, get experience, go to tournaments, face good competition, all that. I am going to get into the high school side of it. But um, a lot of the stuff you're going to hear me talk about is going to apply to the college side of it. Because again, like I said, through my experience, I'm, I'm passionate about that. You know, I, I don't really have regrets, but as I go back, it's like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have played summer ball and just gone and played 40, 50 games. I probably could have stayed home, worked with a strength coach, worked with a hitting coach, whatever it was to improve those areas. And then gone back for my, you know, my senior year to really try to, you know, make that push to play at the next level. Um, so again, I want to start um, by talking about there are some situations where playing summer ball is a good idea. So I'm going to talk about those and then we'll talk about the other side of the spectrum. Okay. So again, this will kind of relate to my situation, but also I talk to a lot of college guys. I get DMs. I have a lot of college guys I train. And I'm very intimate about telling them this. So again, these are just my, my opinions. Um, the first situation where it could be good is playing good competition. You know, some guys are smaller level D1 schools, D2, you know, smaller level D3. And, you know, maybe you are really trying to play at the next level. And even if you have really good stats at your smaller school, sometimes as a scout, whatever it is, or even if you're trying to transfer, like having good numbers in a wood bat summer league against good competition could do wonders for your career, right? Whether it's transferring, whatever it is, getting drafted, you know, getting scouted at least, having a chance to play indie ball, whatever it is. Um, so being able to go play in a good competition may be better competition than you face in college, in your division, your conference. Um, but even just being able to put up good numbers obviously is very beneficial, okay? So definitely a good situation. So I always tell guys like, yeah, if your name's not out there and you think you have a chance to go get some playing time at a good college league, good summer league, like, yes, go play, get some good numbers with wood bats, play in front of scouts if you have the opportunity, you know, all-star game, whatever it is, um, and really kind of put yourself on the map. That's a great situation. I think another good situation where playing summer ball is a good idea is if physically you're in a good place, okay? It doesn't mean you look like a Greek god, but, like, if you're a corner power hitter, like, if you're strong, you know, you can move fast, you can move quick, you can swing the bat hard, you can hit the ball hard, and like you just need to get reps in, like, yeah, go play summer ball, like put on a show, like show off that power. Like you can obviously continue to lift while you're playing summer ball. But if that's an area where physicality wise, you're there, you can deadlift a truck, you can squat, whatever it is, like you can put up the weight, go play summer ball by all means if you're in that position. Okay. And the rule I always say is like, go play if you have at least four out of five tools to showcase. So what do I mean by that? So in, in my situation, I would say I was at like three and a half, four. Okay. I have really good bat to ball contact skills. I was good at that area. I could run, you know, that was my, that was my thing. I was lead off hitter. I could run, um, you know, power was there a little bit. Um, I was a really good defensive center fielder, could move, play the outfield really well. Didn't really have the arm strength. So I would say I was like three and a half, maybe four. Um, 
if you're over four tools, like if you've got the power, contact, whatever it is, if you're missing one tool, that's fine. Even if, especially if it's power, you know, that comes later. But if you have those, those tools to showcase, like go, go showcase them, you know? Um, and I always tell guys, like, as you listen to this, as you hear these situations, like you'll know what camp you're in, right? You might tell yourself like, oh, I have five tools. It's tough to have five tools. Okay. I felt like I was in a really good place you know, playing in that summer league with scouts and they had told me to like need to put on more weight, like fast, but not hundred percent super fast, you know, and I was quick and, um, and especially arm strength, that was a big thing accurate, but needs a little more, you know, juice behind it. So, um, so again, those are the situations where, again, there's a good chance you can go play in a good league, put up good numbers. You have the tools to showcase, go showcase them, put your name on the map, get your scouts eyes on you, you know, hundred percent, go for it, do it. Okay. In terms of high school, like there's definitely good situations also where you can play high school baseball. You can definitely play no matter what I run travel teams. So like play college or play summer baseball, but there's definitely situations where guys will just play a ton of games and they completely neglect development. And I think that that is where you're wasting your time or running out of time or neglecting a key time of the year when you can get after it, really see improvement, really see growth and really see results. Um, so again, now let's get in the situation um, where I believe is the wrong idea to play summer baseball. This is where I'm very animate about because I hear all the excuses. I hear what people tell me and I get it. I've been there. I said the same things like, oh, I'm a college guy. I got to go play summer ball. I got to go play 40 games or, you know, I got to play for high school guys, play for two showcase teams and play 50 games. I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing for your development, for your career. So let's get into it. Okay. The number one thing that always confuses me with college guys, okay, is that they just say, I need to get more at bats. Okay. The number one situation, more at bats are good, especially if you can face good competition, good pitching, have results there. That's great. But too many college guys don't play for their college team during the spring. They sit the bench. Maybe they got 20 at-bats, you know, in garbage time, whatever it is. They didn't get a lot of at-bats for their college team, so they think going to play for summer league will be a chance to make up with those at-bats. That typically doesn't work, okay? I played on some – I was lucky enough to play on some stacked summer rosters, stacked college teams, and let me tell you, the teams are made up of guys that are studs and the dude at their school. And it's a bunch of dudes that have come together for a roster. You rarely see guys that didn't play at all on their college team that are now going to get consistent at bats for that team. The rare time would be if it's at a, a good D2, a D1 school where they just didn't play as a freshman, but they're a stud, you know, they came and got at bats. That's the same obviously, but like, there are guys, D3 guys, Juco guys that didn't play at all their freshman year. They're going to like, oh, I just need at bats. I'm going to go play somewhere. I'm going to go play, you know, college ball in this league and don't get at bats. Now, if it's a low and level enough, if it's a low enough league, excuse me, yeah, you'll get at bats. That's totally fine. I'm not saying don't do that. At bats are good. But to think that you're going to go to a prestigious league and get consistent at bats, consistent playing time, even if it's innings pitching, I know I talk about hitting a lot, but. It's not going to happen again. I've when I played, there are studs, guys that actually went to play pro ball that didn't even play on my my rosters. I had guys that played behind me that literally the next summer were playing in leagues and going off, and but they didn't even play and get at bats because they were younger. They didn't get at bats in college, and sometimes your coaches in summer ball are going to make decisions based on how many at bats they see you got in your season. So if they see you got ten at bats and they're assigned between you and another catcher or the sign between you and other outfielders, sorry, they're probably going to at least to start the year, go with the guy who had at bats because they're trying to bump up their, you know, their coaching resume also. So again, I hate hearing players say, Oh, I just need to get more at bats. I didn't play it all this year. It's like, if you didn't play it all this year, that probably means you have glaring areas you need to improve on glaring areas. And that's the same thing is from the high school perspective. I hear guys that are like, I didn't play much for my high school team, but I'm playing on two different travel ball teams. So hopefully scouts will be, or colleges will be there to look at me. Doesn't really seem logical, right? If you have glaring areas you need to improve on, playing more games is not going to solve that problem. You need to prioritize development. Prioritize development. 
Okay, so this will give me another point. These will kind of all go together, you'll see. But the second situation where I think Summer Ball is a bad idea is when you have nothing to showcase, right? Guys will be like, I just need to get there and showcase stuff. Okay, well, you have one and a half tools. You have a power tool, can't have her contact, you're slow, no arm. <laughs> or it's like super fast, but no contact. Okay, what is you going <laughs> to play Summer Ball going to showcase? So my guys are like, I need to go get exposure. But if you're going to showcase poor tools or poor performance or you don't have the abilities to showcase, that's not going to help you at all, especially if you play in a really good league with college, you know, whether it's college scouts or, or pro scouts, whatever it is. If you're playing in front of them and you showcase nothing, that hurts you more than not playing, right? So if you can take the opportunity to spend time developing those tools, you know, going from you have three months in the summer, you go from not playing at all at college the whole spring to coming back way faster, way stronger, way better swing, more confidence at the plate, better approach. You show up at the fall, they think you got a new athlete. You just locked up playing time for your spring season at college. And now you might be in a prime situation where now the following summer, I have something to showcase for summer ball. Okay. That's the way I kind of see it. Let's make sure before we worry about showcasing, let's make sure we have the abilities to showcase, right? I hear too many guys like, well, I'm going to 15 tournaments this summer, high school guys. I'm going to 15 travel tournaments because I'm hoping a coach is going to be there to see me. Well, you hit 200 for your high school team when you got playing time. So are you going to hit 200 this summer and hope that, you know, Tim Corbin at Vanderbilt is going to now, oh, I want you for my team? No, again, maybe play for one of the travel ball teams and play five or six tournaments. And during the weeks, Focus on developing in the weight room. Focus on developing your swing, whatever it is, okay? Because that's going to bring me to my last point, is summer is the best chance to get ahead of your competition. Again, so many people go through the motions, myself included. When I was in college, I went through the motions. People just think, well, it's summer now. I'll just find any summer ball team to go on, and hopefully I get a bat. So hopefully I play. Hopefully Tim Corbin's there to see me, or hopefully the Yankees are there to see me. Again, not logical, but if you can go against the grain, against what people are doing and join the 5 to 10% guys that are going to spend the summer developing, you can turn into a different ball player that can now have a good season the next spring and showcase your ability the following summer on a high level team or whatever it is, because development will win every single time. Okay. You can go from having three crappy years in college to changing developing, going all in on your development, changing the type of player you are, molding the type of player you know you can be, having a crazy senior year and getting drafted, having a crazy senior year and making a team, whether it's D3 team, JUCO team, and having the chance to develop. So that's why I believe that like you need to go all in on your development. I truly believe that. Um, so again, just to close, like obviously there's situations, there's good arguments for both. I'm not here saying that I end all be all. I know everything. Um, but for me personally speaking, like if I had to invest on development or playing more games, like I'm choosing development every time. It's not even a question for me because if I can get bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive, I can develop a swing. I can be in a high level training environment. Like that's going to help you be ready for the following year. You know, again, if you have questions about this, if you feel like, you know, Maybe what I said, you're in the gray area between whether or not you should play. Like, feel free, DM me on Instagram, you know, message me on Twitter, whatever it is. Like, I love to talk. I love to hear your situation um, and just help you make the right decision for you. Okay. So that's where, like, I always talk about all the time with zeal, with business, with me training guys. Like, my main goal is to be the person I needed. Everyone says that. But, like, I truly believe, like, I want to develop players. I want to be the hitting coach I needed. I want to be that mentor I needed, strength coach. Like I want to provide the facility, the environment, the instruction, the programs that will help athletes get to the next level, make the team, get playing time, get drafted, get the D1 scholarship, whatever it is. And I truly believe that that's what I'm trying to build here at Zeal. Okay. So if you're in the Rochester area, you're hearing this, you're a parent, you're a coach, you're an athlete. Again, feel free to DM me. You can fill out a contact form on my website. But I do have open slots in my summer development program. There's five slots left, 15 total slots. I have a bunch of athletes that are all in on development this summer. We have high school guys, college guys. Um, so if you're a high school guy, college guy, you're a parent of an athlete not knowing what to do, 
fill out the contact form if you want, or you can go right ahead and sign up right on my website, zealhittingdevelopment.com. Um, and you can look under training. There's a development program. Um, and you can come in-house, train at Zeal. It's a great option. Also have options for hitting lessons, things like that. If you're listening to this and you're a remote athlete or you're someone that wants to work with me, I have a remote training program. I'm relaunching it for this summer. You can get the same strength program, the same hitting instruction drills tailored to you, the same type of instruction and communication you'd have with me in-house remotely. Okay, I already have a number, good handful of remote athletes. I have some more that are signing up this summer. Again, I just want athletes that want the best. They want that mentor. They want that hitting coach. They want that guy that's going to help them make the right decisions. So again, if you want to work with me, you don't live near me, you don't live in Rochester, you don't live in New York, again, you can fill out the remote training form, zealhittingdevelopment.com. Look under training. There's remote training. There's a form you can fill out or DM me just the word remote on Instagram. I have people DM me all the time trying to get information on it. I can give you more information. I can set up a call where we can talk about options. Um, to make sure that you spend this summer developing, doing the things you need to do. Okay. So that will wrap up today's episode. Again, we have some more exciting guests, some more exciting episodes. Um, so I just, again, I want to thank you for the support. Thank you for listening, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for the support. If you are watching, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, follow on Apple Podcasts, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode.